Hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Kumusta po sa lahat all over the world? Four centuries with the Ottoman Empire ended during World War I by the 1916 Arab Revolt, led by Sharif Hussein of Mecca and his sons Abdallah, Faisal, and Ali, members of the Hashemite family of the Hejaj, supposedly descendants of the Prophet Muhammad. Locally, the revolt was reported by tribes, including the Bedouins, Circassians, and Christians. The allies of World War I, including Britain and France, uh, offered support as well. The revolt started on June 5, 1916, and it reached Transjordan in the Battle of Aqaba on July 6, 1917. Faisal entered Damascus in October 1918 and started the Arab-led military uh, declared as the Arab Kingdom of Syria later. During this period, Man and Aqaba was also claimed by the Kingdom of Hejaj. The Hashemite Kingdom over Greater Syria was forced to surrender to French troops on July 24, 1920 during the Battle of Maisalun. The Arab aspirations failed to gain international recognition due to the secret, secret 1916 sykes pico Agreement, which divided the region into French and British spheres of influence, and then the 1917 Balfour Declaration, which promised Palestine to Jews. This was seen by the Hashemites and the Arabs as a betrayal, uh, including the agreement uh, 1915 mcmahon hussein cor correspondence. The British High Commissioner Herbert Samuel uh, went to Transjordan on August 21, 1920 and declared and would provide assistance to the establishment of local governments, which is to be kept separate from that of the Palestine. The second meeting also took place in Umkays on September 2, uh, where the British government, Major Fitzroy Somerset, received a petition that demanded an independent Arab government in Transjordan to be led by an Arab prince, also called Emir, land sale on Transjordan to Jews be stopped as well as the prevention of Jewish immigration, and that Britain establish and fund a national army, and that free trade be maintained between the region. Abdullah, the second son of Sharif Hussein on November 21, 1920, uh, redeemed the greater Syrian kingdom his brother had lost. Abdullah regained the trust of tribal leaders before scrambling to convince them of the benefits of an organized government, and then Abdallah's successes kind of made the British government jealous. Um, so they reluctantly accepted Abdallah as a ruler of Transjordan after giving him a six month trial. So in March 1921, the British decided to add Transjordan to their mandate for Palestine. And on April 11, 1921, the Emirates of Transjordan was established with Abdallah as Emir. In September 1922, 1922, the Council of the League of Nations recognized Transjordan as a state under the terms of the Transjordan Memorandum, and it remained uh, a British mandate until 1946. There were a lot of difficulties emerged. Uh, there were a lot of difficulties that emerged upon the assumption of power in the region by the Hashemite leadership. In Transjordan, there were small local rebellions at Kura in 1921 and 1923 uh, that were suppressed by the Emir's forces with the help of the British. Wahhabis from Najd regained strength and repeatedly raided the southern parts of the territory, seriously threatening uh, Emir's position. Uh, he, the Emir, was unable to repel those raids without the aid of the local Bedouin tribes and the British who maintained a military base. The Treaty of London signed by the British government and the Emir of Transjordan on March 22, 1946, recognized the independence of the country. On May 25, 1946, the day that the treaty was ratified by the parliament, Transjordan was uh, raised to the status of a kingdom under the name of the Hashemite Kingdom of Transjordan with Abdallah as the first king, and then it was and then it shortened to Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan on April 26, 1949. May 25th is celebrated as the nation's Independence Day, and Jordan became a member of the United Nations on December 14, 1955. On May 15, 1948, as part of the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, Jordan uh, intervened in Palestine with many other Arab states, and then following this war, Jordan controlled the West Bank, and it annexed these territories. Some Arab countries demanded Jordan's expulsion from the Arab League. 
On June 12, 1950, the League declared that the annexation was just temporary, uh, pending a future set settlement. King Abdullah was assassinated at the Al Aqsa Mosque in 1951 with the idea that he was going to sign a peace treaty with Israel. Abdullah was succeeded by his son Talal, who, uh, who, who would soon um, come down with an illness, and uh, eldest son Hussein took over. The Talal established the country's modern constitution in 1952. Then Hussein ascended to the throne in 1953 at the age of 17. The 1950s uh, were a period of political upheaval. Uh, on March 1st, 1956, King Hussein uh, commanded the army by dismissing a number of British officers, uh, which is an act to remove the uh, foreign influence in the country. In 1958, Jordan and the neighboring Hashemite Iraq formed the Arab Federation as a response to the formation of the rival United Arab Republic between Nasser's Egypt and Syria. The union lasted only for six months, being dissolved after Iraqi King Faisal II, who was Hussein's cousin, uh, was deposed by a military coup on July 14, 1958. Jordan then signed a pact with Egypt just before Israel I started a strike on Egypt to begin the Six-Day War in June 1967, where Jordan and Syria joined the war. The Arab states were defeated, and Jordan lost control of the West Bank to Israel. The War of Attrition with Israel uh, followed, which included the 1968 Battle of Karameh, where the Jordanian Armed Forces and the Palestine Liberation Organization repelled an Israeli attack in Karameh. Uh, despite the fact that the Palestinians had limited involvement against the Israel army, the events at Karameh gained recognition in the Arab world, and as a result, the time period following the battle uh, witnessed a support for Palestinian paramilitary elements called the Fedayeen within Jordan from other Arab countries. The Fedayeen activities became a threat to the country of Jordan, and in September 1970, the Jordanian army uh, targeted the Fedayeen, and the fighting led to the expulsion of fighters into Lebanon in a conflict that became known as the Black September. In 1973, Egypt and Syria waged the Yom Kippur War on Israel, and fighting happened along the Jordan River. Uh, it sent a brigade to Syria to attack Israeli units on the Syrian territory, but did not engage Israeli forces from Jordanian territory. So at the Rabat Summit Conference in 1974, after the Yom Kippur War, uh, Jordan agreed that the uh, PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, was the sole uh, legitimate representative of the Palestinian uh, uh, people. And then it renounced, and Jordan renounced its claims to the West Bank in 1988. At the 1991 Madrid conference, Jordan agreed to negotiate a peace treaty as sponsored by the United States and the Soviet Union, and then the Israel-Jordan Treaty of Peace was signed on October 26, 1994. On February 7, 1999, Abdullah II uh, ascended the throne upon the death of his father, Hussein. Um, he did a lot of good things, uh, economic liberation when he assumed the throne, and he uh, made some reforms uh, that led to an economic growth, the Arab Spring in 2010 were like protests and demanded economic and political reforms. Many of these protests tore down regimes in some of the Arabic nations. Uh, in Jordan, in response to domestic unrest, Abdullah replaced his prime minister and introduced a number of reforms, including reforming the constitution and laws governing public freedoms and elections. There was a reintroduction of the parliament in the 2016 general election, 
and in a move which he said would eventually lead to establishing a parliamentary government. Well, that's it for the history of Jordan. I will see you again in the next adventure here in Jordan. Stay safe, everyone. Hopefully with the vaccines that are coming out, we can all emerge out of this pandemic pretty quickly. I'll see you guys again next time.